Minions are one of the most important aspects of Hypixel Skyblock, as they let you generate millions of coins entirely passively and level up tons of different skills along the way. The debate over which minion is the best minion will forever be an ongoing battle that changes based off of new updates, but what will stay constant will be the build and setup designs used to easily contain the minions that you choose. After posting my Revenant minion setup video a few weeks ago, it became clear that this design was super useful for your average one block wide mobs, but if you wanted to use larger hitbox mobs such as slime or sheep minions, this design doesn't really work. As a result, I spent some time off camera tweaking the previous design and experimenting with it for a few days to create the most compact and useful mob minion setup, but this time, it's designed specifically for your larger mobs. So before we start building, here is a quick list of all the blocks you're going to need so you can replicate this build exactly the way that I do. You're going to need 50 full blocks of your choice. For this build, I'm going to be using 9 different glass blocks, 32 pillar quartz blocks, and then 9 regular quartz blocks. You will also need 24 slabs of your choice, 36 glass panes, and 24 carpets. Then once you have all of those blocks in your inventory, you want to start things off by clearing out a space and then putting a 3x3 platform of blocks beneath you. Like I said, I'm going to be using quartz for this build, and I just have it suspended in the middle of the void to make this building tutorial easy to follow. Then once you have your spawning platform in place, you want to go ahead and fill the corners in with any blocks of your choice. I'm going to be using pillar quartz blocks and I'm going to be building these up five tall in each corner. And then once you've gone ahead and done that, it should look something like this. With the corners in place, you can then go ahead and just join them all up with any blocks of your choice. I'm going to be using the pillar quartz blocks as well, but this time I've slanted them on their side to create this little box formation. Then the next step from here can just be to fill in the top of the box. Now, I like the look of white stained glass for this build. That way I can look down and see what's going on inside the box, but you do not have to be using glass. You can just fill it in with regular blocks or however you choose. Then you want to go ahead and grab your glass panes and fill in these little gaps here by making a 3x3 three three of glass panes, so it should look something like this. And now that you've gone ahead and placed all the glass panes down, it should look something like this. We can go ahead and grab the slabs of your choice, and now we can fill this around the entirety of the box. To do this, you want to go two blocks from the bottom of the build and place the slab on the top half of the secondary block and just place them like so, so it surrounds the entirety of the box. Then once you've placed all these slabs around the entirety of our box, we can go ahead, grab our carpets and then place them like so, as this will just prevent any mobs from spawning depending on what minions you choose to use. And now that we've gone ahead and placed all the carpets, this is the entirety of the build practically finished. Now, if you are using slime minions with corrupt soil, you will not be needing minion storages, so you don't have to follow along with the following step. But if you're using any other minion like cow, sheep, pig, even spider minions, then you are going to need minion storages, so follow along closely and you'll see how to integrate them with this design. So to start things off, we're going to go ahead and place all the minions down as follows. So grab out whatever minions you're using for this build, I have slimes here, but it doesn't really matter. And then place all three of them underneath the glass panes as so, and repeat this on the entirety of this build. With your minions placed and in position, you should notice that when you run across the glass panes and look straight down, you should be able to access these really easily. But now that they are placed down, you want to go to the bottom of the build and knock out these four blocks as follows to make this cool looking cross pattern on the ground. Next, you want to go ahead and place a medium storage in all of the blocks that we just knocked out, so that way it will fill in the space that we once had. And then you can place a storage here and here to go with these two minions, and repeat the same thing on every side of the build. And then with all those storages placed, that should be the entire thing complete. You can see that every single minion does have a minion storage. And if I fly out to give you a better look, this is the full design complete and functional. So that's the entirety of this minion design complete. As long as you log off and leave your minions to work while you aren't playing the game, they'll be making as much money as you'd like them to, and they'll be leveling up your skills and just generating items. Now the biggest thing to note with this design is you need to make sure that you place the glass panes properly because they are designed so you can run into them, look straight down, and then claim the minions as you need to. And these carpets are also super important because if you use a minion such as a cow or a pig minion, they will spawn mobs on this little running platform if you do not have carpets here. 
Depending on the setup you're using and what your island actually looks like, you might have to place carpets in other locations as well. So just be careful of how the minions will spawn things and use your judgment to figure out why the design might not work on your island. And now the final thing that I want to talk about with this design is this little annoying pop-up saying, I can't reach slimes. Now, as you can see, my slime minions at the back here aren't able to actually reach the slimes they've spawned. And that's because Hypixel has some really weird buggy code where all the slimes will just jump to the south of the island and that's just what they do. If I give you a side view, you can very clearly see that these minions are not able to reach the slimes on the edge of the build. And I tried so many different things to try and make it so that they could. But long story short, there isn't really much you can do about this. So my biggest recommendation is to just not be on your island for as long as possible. However, if you are really stubborn and for some reason you really want to AFK these minions, there is a way. It's just a little bit annoying, but I'll show you how to do it. So you want to start things off by standing at the very top middle of the box, or alternatively, you can stay at the very bottom middle of the box. It doesn't really matter. And once you are in position, you want to go to your accessory bag and make sure that you remove the intimidation artifact. When you get rid of this intimidation artifact, you can see that these slimes start to aggro me and they actually stay in the center of the design, the way that it's actually intended. Now, as long as you just stay roughly in the center with no intim artifacts, they will stay in the middle, then the slimes will die to the minions, and then you can just AFK this as you wish. And if you are designing any more setups because you have more than 12 minions, you want to design a second one of these boxes either above you or below you, because that way the slimes will continue to aggro you and you'll be able to AFK them as you wish. Either way, I would suggest just not bothering with AFKing this setup as it works really well without any AFK at all. And I'll get to how much this actually makes in the later parts of this video as I did run some tests to give you guys some cool numbers. But either way, you might be thinking right now, well, if the slimes can't reach the minions because they keep jumping south, then what happens if I put minion expanders in them? To keep things simple, adding minion expanders unfortunately doesn't do anything. The design still works with them, and I definitely recommend using minion expanders if you are going to use slimes. But even though the minion expander says that it increases the range of the minion by one block, it only increases the placement range where it's actually able to place the slime one block further. It doesn't actually increase the range at which its sword attacks. You can see that even with the minion expanders placed in these back three minions, they still say they can't reach any slimes once they reach the maximum amount of slime spawned. So there really isn't anything that you can do to avoid this aside from the intimidation artifact trick that I've already shown you. But nonetheless, this isn't really too big of a deal because as I said, as long as you just AFK these and don't visit your island too frequently, they will still generate plenty of profits, make you lots of money. And this bug only really happens with these slime minions in particular because the way that these slimes are coded is just really weird and buggy in general. So now comes the fun part of the video where I cover all of the profits made from these minions because I know a lot of you are probably curious as to how much money these slime minions make since slime minions are the hot topic right now and everybody seems to be using them. So on screen now should be some footage of me collecting these minions with a perfect 24 hour window in between them. And I ended up doing this test with just the typical super compactor and minion expander setup, but I also did it with the very standard corrupt soil and minion expander setup as well. Now, if I show you how much enchanted slime I got from 29 tier 11 slime minions, you can see that I ended up getting about 4.8 million coins worth. And this is with once again, 29 tier 11 slimes, which ran for a full 24 hours. Now this is obviously using bazaar prices as enchanted slime does sell for a lot more on the bazaar, but I did check the value of these slime balls on different days that wasn't the one that I had this recording on, and they did sell for 5.1 million coins at the highest number that I did see. This is important to note because if you are going to be using super compactors with minion expanders, you can expect your profits to fluctuate slightly differently from day to day because you are selling to the bazaar and not just to an NPC like the corrupt soil method. So just for the sake of this video simplicity, I'm going to say that you can get around 5 million coins per day using 29 tier 11 slime minions, which comes down to roughly 172,500 coins per minion. So now that we have a baseline comparison of the typical super compactor and main expander setup for these minions, let's have a look at how much these corrupt soil ones made instead. 
Now, for those that aren't aware already, a very popular strategy for these minions is to place Corrupt Soil, a minion expander, and then an Enchanted Hopper in the minion, because what this does is it makes the slime minion create a ton of the corrupted fragments, and these will fill up in your minions extremely quickly and then get sold to the NPC with the Enchanted Hopper, which then results in a lot of profits. The reason this works so well with slime minions is because they have the lowest interaction rate out of any other mob minion in the game. And if you do the very quick mental maths here, generating tons of sulfur, corrupt fragments, and slime balls, and then NPCing all of it, it will make you a lot of money in the long run. So if we take a look at the footage on screen right now, you can see that every single one of these hoppers has accumulated around 150,000 coins. Now compared to the non-enchanted hopper and corrupt soil method, this is less coin per minion if we just look at the hoppers alone. However, this is excluding the fact that there is a ton of corrupted fragments, sulfur, and slime balls in the minions themselves. So after going around to all my minions, claiming every single one, and collecting all the hoppers, you can see that we're left with a whopping 5.6 million coins in total. Now, if I run the calculations again, this leaves one of these slime minions generating about 193,000 coins by itself, which is a pretty substantial jump from the 172,000 coins per minion. So if we just look at the raw profits of using Corrupt Soil with Enchanted Hoppers versus Super Compactors and their Minion Expanders, it is definitely much better to be using the Corrupt Soil technique as this earns a lot more money. Now, not only is the Corrupt Soil method better for money, but it also unlocks the Sulfur Collection, which can be very useful for a bunch of different items. But it's also much easier to run than the traditional Super Compactor and Minion Expander method. This is because you can leave these minions running for as long as you want, and their profits will never really change unless Hypixel decides to update the NPC price. So you will always be making the same amount of money no matter what, and the bizarre values will not change these numbers at all. This is a very big positive to the Corrupt Soil method, as a huge downside to the non-Corrupt Soil method is that you have to be claiming these minions relatively frequently, with no less than about 3 days per collection. This is because if you leave these minions running for too long, the Enchanted Slime Balls will turn into Enchanted Slime Blocks, and if you weren't aware already, you get a lot more money by selling the Enchanted Slime Balls than you do selling the Enchanted Slime Blocks. So not only does the Corrupt Soil method make you more money and unlock more collections, but it also removes the stress of having to claim these minions really frequently, and if you're someone who just wants to leave them AFK for ages, you can absolutely do that. So overall, if you want to be using this exact same setup with these slime minions inside of it, make sure you use Corrupt Soil, Enchanted Hoppers, and Minion Expanders, because this is definitely the best way to make your coins. But with that being said, that's pretty much everything that I did have for today's video. Hope you guys found this useful, informative, or enjoyable in some way, and this minion setup will serve you well with whatever minions you choose to put inside of it. I've certainly been using this on some of my Skyblock profiles to make some extra coins in the meantime, and I know for certain that it makes a lot of money and works extremely well. But either way, that is everything that I did have for today's video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.